Bellordell had come upon the aftermath of a slaughter. The victims were a small group of wanderers that had made their home in a fungal forest in Gur, Feeding off the local wildlife, they made a life for themselves while hiding from the loud and brutish Uroks in the area. Bellordell had come upon them previously in his travels. They were friendly, but ultimately wished to be left to themselves. The Uroks that found them did not share that wish. The tracks on the ground showing a fair number of the beasts encountering the elven enclave. At least, Bell or Dell thought to himself, the wanderers took as many as were taken. Along with the bodies of elves of all ages were the arrow-riddled corpses of Uroks. Wooden shafts protruded from eye sockets and throats, and in a few cases, the blades of finely crafted daggers were shoved into major arteries. In the end, it wasn't enough. The elves were all killed, their souls now lost beyond mortal eyes. Although Bell or Dell could not help the dead, he could avenge them. Looking through the remains of the camp, he found Uruk tracks leaving the now empty village. The number of tracks was surprisingly low, indicating the Uruks lost most of their number during the fight. Bellordell rushed away from the camp in pursuit of the killers, planning to finish the work his former friends had started. Grok faced Slugger laughed with his boys. The biggest Uruk of the group, he was the natural leader establishing his dominance with punches to the head and kicks to the shins. Willing to laugh with his boys during a good fight, but always ready to crush a skull or two if they even thought of challenging him. They had just come back from an unprofitable and unsatisfying fight. Facing off against some elves in the forest, they had hoped to grab some goodies from the slain. All they got instead was useless wooden trinkets and some of the worst fighting they ever had. The elves mostly refusing to face them head on and shooting at them with arrows, which annoyed Grok to no end. He made sure to cut off some of the legs and arms of the stupid elves, having the weaklings bleed out instead of dying quickly to his chopper. That's what they got for not letting him kill them in a straight-up fight. Deep in thought, he had bumped into one of his boys who had simply decided to stand in his way like an idiot. He punched the fool on the top of the head, forcing the stupid Uruk to fall to the ground in a daze. Raising his leg to stop him a few more times for good measure, the fallen boy quickly pointed his hand to the path ahead before quickly saying, Look, boss. Grok looked up to see an elf standing on the path ahead. Clad in shiny silver armor and the fur of some giant white cat, he looked very different and much more fighty than the leather-wearing elves he had just slaughtered. Even better, instead of an annoying little bow, the elf was wielding a giant axe, an impressive-looking weapon that was pointed directly at Grok. As an Uruk, Grok recognized a challenge when he saw one. And so did the five boys he was leading. If he showed any hesitation, especially to an elf, he knew he would lose face. And that's something a boss can't afford. Taking a moment to crack his neck and spit on the ground, he grabbed his chopper from his belt and walked slowly to the elf, his boys staying behind to watch. As he walked forward, Grog smiled a toothy smile, licking his lips and looking at the elf with hungry eyes, hoping to shake the elf before the battle. The elf didn't so much as blink. His face was completely impassive. Annoyed, Grok swung with his chopper, expecting the elf to dodge his blow rather than face his full strength. Instead, the skinny elf blocked the hit with his axe. Worse, he simply stood like a stone, the force of Grok's blow unable to move or even slightly shift the elf. Grok roared, throwing blow upon blow on the elf, hitting the elf with everything he had to try to bring him down. The elf simply continued taking the hits, each strike deftly blocked by the elf, the passive look on his face mocking Grok's strength in front of his minions. Raging, Grok took his chopper in both hands and raised it up into the air, readying it for a massive blow on the arrogant elf. As he swung down, the elf quickly dodged to the left. Momentarily shocked, Grok was unable to react as the elf elegantly flowed from the dodge into a swing that took Grok's leg at the knee, before Grok could even finish falling. The elf turned his swing into a 360 degree turn that finished with his axe head entering Grok's left shoulder and exiting from the right side of his neck. Bellador waited. With the leader of the Uruks dead, the five remaining Uruks stood in silence, their primitive minds contemplating their next course of action. Finally, they all looked at each other and nodded. Having killed enough Uruks in his time, he could guess their mind. First take care of the threat, then worry about who the next boss would be. They began to move towards him, 
the way they held themselves showing clearly they were prepared to charge him in a mad rush. So focused were they on him, they had not noticed a danger at their back until Selina struck. The White Lion, Belador's bestial companion, attacked the rearmost Uruk from behind, dropping it to the ground and mauling it. The other Uruks turned around in surprise, which allowed Belador to attack from the front, using his great axe to cut the arm of a distracted Uruk. Belodel and Selina were a perfect fusion of blade and fang, their attacks coming on so quickly and brutally that the Uruks had no time to rally, leaving them open to their relentless attack. Before long, the Uruks were cut down completely, their bodies a mess of flesh and blood. After it was done, Belodel stood in silence. Breathing slowly, he centered himself, letting the rage of battle slowly ebb away from him. Selina purred, rubbing herself against him and looking up at him worriedly. Smiling at his companion, Bellordell started walking back towards the former home of the Wanderers. His mission was not done. With vengeance sated, he must now say prayers over the bodies of the slain, easing the souls of those who sadly desired peace in a time of war. In the Age of Myth, the Lion Rangers were a warrior brotherhood that lived in monasteries across the realms. Building them in inaccessible places such as high mountaintops or remote islands, they spent their time in training, becoming powerful warrior monks that trained in the battle axes that became their signature weapon. As powerful and skilled as they were, however, they could not survive alone against the forces of chaos. Mountain hideaways and island retreats fell as the Lion Rangers tried their best to protect their homes. Eventually, they had no choice but to stumble back to the gates of Azir, to hide in the realm of heaven, while the forces of chaos went rampant on the realms beyond. Unlike others who fled to the city of Azerheim, the Lion Rangers chose to live out in the forest of Azir. No longer trusting of walls and fortresses, they became wandering nomads, combining their already intense martial training with the knowledge they need to survive in the wilds of the realms. When the gates of Azir finally opened, the Lion Rangers became the scouts for the various forces that wished to reclaim the realms. The Lion Rangers, also known as White Lions, are the main core of this army. Dedicated to improving their craft through intense training, they stand firm against any who would stand in their way, whether that be a rampaging Uruk or a vile beast man. When speed and even more strength is needed, the Lion Rangers are known to employ White Lion Chariots, the beast's fangs combined with the rider's axe becoming a hard-hitting weapon of war. To be a Lion Ranger is to be a warrior of great strength and unmatched resolve, to wander the land in search of the enemy and bring it down with a swing of your axe. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this story about the Lion Rangers. I like the fact that Games Workshop sort of changed them into a sort of wandering warrior monks with giant axes. They're sort of like the Dritz of this universe, except, you know, with lions instead of panthers. If you like it, please like, comment, or subscribe. And if you really like it, consider giving to my Patreon. With the money, I hope to be able to spend more time working on these stories I love to write. Hopefully you feel the same way. Thank you, and see you next time.